Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Christoph Asmann, and I'll talk a little bit about high-quality Magento extensions. As I said, my name is Christoph Asmann. I work at uh, NetResearch as a software developer. Um, I started there as an extension developer, and now I'm part of the NetResearch factory team. Um, Thomas yesterday told you that at the NetResearch App Factory we sell Magento extensions or apps, so we are kind of a distributor. And what I did there was checking those extensions we are about to sell for their quality, so just to decide whether we will sell them at uh, our platform or not. Um, so when we talk about high quality Magento extensions, we will certainly have to talk about quality and like define what we understand when we're talking about quality. And um, afterwards, I'll just tell you a little bit of how we may reach quality um, along the software de development process, because I think that's a good thread for the presentation, just to go along the um, development process and just give you some ideas, some tools that you can use, that you can uh, just have in mind um, in order to improve your extensions or just, yeah, improve the quality. Um, when we're talking about quality, we think that it's all about expectations. So there are different um, stakeholders, different roles involved in um, the development process, which is on the one hand the client, then the merchant or the customers that in the end use your extension, and the uh, agency, the developers, so probably you guys. And um, quality is just about matching the expectations of the different roles within your product. Um, when we see the software development process, there are different methodologies, but that's not too important because the scrum process or waterfall process, they all share the same faces more or less, just a little bit uh, different tied together. So in the end it comes down, in our opinion, to the phases of uh, planning, implementation, release, and maintenance. So I will now go through these different phases and yeah, present some ideas. Um, starting with the planning phase, um, we think that it's really important to um, detect which expectations the customer has. So we begin with um, writing down the user stories, like the business case, the functionality that the customer wants, the client that will buy your extension in the end. Um, afterwards, we do a little refinement and um, write down some use cases. Use cases are written down by the contractor and the client together, whereas the user story um, is more like on the, the side of the user, the, um, the client. Um, the use cases are used to track down the functional requirements. Sometimes they are written down in a formal language, but that's not really necessary here because it's only important that you bear in mind what the uh, contractor, the client, wanted. Because sometimes you switch projects and afterwards you can, can come back to the use cases, just have in mind, ah yeah, he wished to do this and that. And when you write it down, like we do it mostly, um, then you always have something there to remember what the client really wanted. Um, and of course, which is, in my opinion, really important to refine these use cases because they may change. You all know that um, in the beginning, the client has some ideas what you want to realize, but they may change. So you probably need to refine these um, within the process. Um, within the implementation phase, we think that there are different criteria that are important to the customer regarding the quality. These are compatibility, maintainability, security, performance, usability, reliability, and validity. I'll go through the steps now. 
Um, compatibility, of course, the client wants that the extension he orders runs in different Magento version and um, runs together with different um, extensions from yeah, other developers. So what's really important is that you do not apply core hacks, hacks that you um, avoid rewriting as often as possible and in the end it's, it's really amazing that it's really often possible to avoid rewrites by using event observers. Just, it takes you a little more offer, uh, effort, but um, it makes things really easier in the end because you just do not have any incompatibilities with other extensions anymore. So extensions that use the same rewrite, two extensions that use the same rewrite are not compatible. The clients call you, ask you, why doesn't, doesn't this extension work? And you have to say, um, I'm sorry, well, the other extension uses the same functionality and it doesn't work out of the box, not with the extension you have installed, so the client is unhappy. Um, maintainability, that's um, an important point on your side and the um, side of the developers because you are like responsible for maintaining code even after half a year um, after you, you initially wrote it. So um, that's a real world example of, well, a method that's not really easy to maintain, I guess. Um, just because it's pretty long, there are um, line breaks in our little 120 character field here. And um, if you have it open in your editor, it's not easy to see what happens there because um, it's too long, there are no comments in it. Um, so, I really appreciate when other developers write comments in the code, like doc box for the methods, inline comments, just to describe what they did there. Um, because sometimes it's not too easy to get it, what other developers wrote down or what even you yourself wrote down like half a year ago. So it really helps. And what's even more important is um, that you never should encrypt your code. So that's a possibility in PHP, but we're talking about open source here, and only if the code remains open source, it's not encrypted, it's um, possible to maintain it and to find bugs and everything like that. Um, coming to security, that's a really important point too, and these are some real world examples that I found. Um, first one, really, don't be lazy. Don't do that, don't write things like to do or fix me or something in the code because yeah, you're likely to forget it and if the uh, development environment doesn't show you the to-dos, then you're pretty much lost. The second one um, does something really dangerous. Here it sets the order status to paid and um, the intention was that the payment provider sends that uh, request via API call. But um, it's not tested who comes there, who calls that method. So it's even possible to uh, call the action through your browser, and that's really dangerous and not as, as intended. Um, when it comes to performance, you should really avoid things like that. That's a reward example too. Um, here we go through the attributes and save it one by one. So you should really not do any writing on uh, the database or whatever in a loop that really slows down the performance. And um, what's really important regarding the performance is that you activate the profiler because the profiler that's included in Magento can already show you where are performance leaks or something else, so it's easy to detect them once you have the profiler enabled and just do it. I can really recommend that. Um, coming to the usability, that's where the client really gets in contact with your extension. The client himself doesn't really care if it's well programmed or not, how it's internally built, but um, interaction with the user, that's what he sees in the end. 
So um, I really recommend make clear what input you expect and if there's some input you did not expect, just give the user notices, warnings or errors. Magento has the ability to, um, to use the different um, error lock um, levels. So it's pretty easy to do that. And what you should do too is have your extension translated. Um, send every string through the translator. Then it's really easy to get it to different markets and help the customer along through your application. And if you're not sure yourself how the client can react when using your extension, have someone else look at it. Because we as developers get somehow blind after a while. We know how we intended the software to work, but um, the client does not. So just get someone else from like the marketing team or wherever, just have, a, have them a look at your extension. And um, if you have different ways how to do it in the front end, let them choose. Let them choose what's the better way by A-B testing, for instance. Validation verification. Um, of course, it's important to develop the right thing. That's what I said in the beginning. Um, the client is not always sure in the beginning what he will really want in the end. So keep the release cycles short. Show your um, client like, at a milestone just what you did for now. And he can tell you if you're going in the right direction or not. And developing it in the right way is important too, because often we get lazy and use just like test data, like Alice and Bob and FooBar, whatever you can imagine, but they do not buy in the store in the end. So I think it's really important to use a wide range of data that are close to reality and just like try something like having ordered 500 pieces of some item. So then you see if your extension works in the right way or not. And um, fixtures and fixtures and expectations help you with that because then you can predefine data when you test your application and it's not all the data get collected from the database because you do not want to test the database connector. You really want to test your application and your methods. Um, coming to testing, really simple thing is what we always do, um, have two people look at it. That's so easy, just have a chat with them, have them look at your code, have them done do reviews or inspectations. That's pretty easy and that helps you getting along with your extension pretty much better. Um, you can test on smaller units, like after a task, you can test on sprints, which you should do um, bigger testing with. You can test your extension manually or automated, um, whereas automated, we use um, a continuous integration server called Jenkins. And there it's pretty easy to test your code because once um, there are changes in your versioning system, the Jenkins server recognizes them and runs the test that you defined. These can be a front-end test, like Selenium tests, or back-end, uh, sorry, code tests, uh, running with PHP unit and the EcomDev framework. PHP unit can also be used to measure the, um, yeah, measure the code coverage. So, um, that helps you to see if every, every line of code is gone through and um, if there can any, any errors occur or ex um, exceptions are not caught or something like that. And you can run program analy analysis when you do not want to do it manually. So what we do is um, we run some program through the extensions that just check for the um, yeah, if there are comments, if it's uh, formed right, like after um, like coding, if coding standards are applied, 
and things like that. Uh, when releasing your software, we found that it's pretty much straightforward to use Git for deployment together with Modman. And um, it's rather not a good idea to have your deployment with FTP or SCP, SCP um, because it's just not reliable which files you have to transfer. And we found out that it's pretty much straightforward doing it with Git. And uh, Modman helps you to keep the extension um, separated from um, the Magento installation. Um, we do not do that on live systems, but on development systems and on stage systems, it's pretty a pretty good way, we think, to use Modman. Um, maintaining the software is important, too, because um, it really shows up if your extension works or not when it's in use. So you should always do some monitoring how the um, extension behaves, if it slows down after a while with a bigger database or something. And you should, in our opinion, establish a support process. So um, clients can just come back to you somehow and tell you which problems exist. Therefore, you should define incidents, like yeah, that's a minor problem or that's a real bug that stops all the application working, and should assign appropriate actions to these incidents. Because um, merchants that have a real problem that stop their business need faster help than just a change request or something. And um, to help you with the process, there should be persons in your company responsible for um, getting back to the customer, taking the appropriate actions, etc. And um, for the customer, it's always important that you define um, times to react and times to repair. That means that he can be sure that after one day, two days, or five days, he gets a reaction or a fixed program. Um, in the end, improving your quality is pretty easy when you keep some principles in mind, which is the 4i principle. As I said, just have someone else look at your code from time to time or at uh, defined steps, like on milestones. Um, do test-driven development or any other development methodology that includes testing. That's pretty important, I guess. Um, keep it short and simple. That's um, what, I, what I said before. Keep the methods short. Um, keep them readable, human readable. Um, it just simplifies the testing process because when they are short and just rely on the data you give in and um, the data you get out, then it's much easier to test. Uh, don't repeat yourself. There's a rule of thumb that you all should follow, in our opinion, because um, when you have the same methods doing the same stuff at different positions, then you can't keep track of it. It's uh, too hard. So don't repeat yourself. If you um, get the impression that there are similar code lines in different, um, in different classes or so, then do refactoring. And of course, you can, much about, uh, can read much about the best practices in the docs, as there are um, developer documentation available for Magento. And of course, read the blogs, as there are numerous blogs out there that have best practices available that cover problems problems that occur. Um, yeah, just keep your eyes open. That's a that's a tip that I can give you. Uh, and so thank you so far. If there are any questions, just ask them now. Um, me personally, I did like five, but I'm not the only employee in my company, so there are a few other um, yeah, employees that did the evaluation of some extensions. How many of the extensions actually 
I think it's about 90% actually that well past yeah to to a certain level the tests. So there are not really much extensions that test to be rejected. So I think we are in general at a relatively good level in extensions uh, in extension programming, but um, still it's important to have it tested and check for compatibility issues and stuff like that. Um, what made us reject them? It was more like when we found that it would be too hard to maintain the extensions, then we had to reject them. Um, reasons could be numerous, like code that you do not understand, because yeah, it's too long, too complicated, too complex, and not following any any guidelines or something that just makes it hard for us to maintain and when we sell them we are still the first persons for the for the users that um, that they will complain at you know so we try to sell extensions that we do not have too much <coughs> problems with afterwards Any other questions? Okay, thank you.